Hey everyone, I wanted to jump on and show you what I got going on in my garden today. So since I posted my garden from last year, I wanted to go ahead and show you what I got, I got going on this year. A lot of container gardening. I learned a big lesson about my shelf. So let me show you. I got my berries going over here. I got some strawberries and some blackberries and blueberries and raspberries. I got my big tree, my big rose tree, which I love her so much. Look, I have no idea where I'm going to put her yet. She's gorgeous and smells divine. I have my fruit trees along the back wall here. Trimmed them all up before the winter and now look at all the new growth very happy. They're dwarf. I'm trying to keep them small and lollipopped. And there's my orange and lemon and lime. Down here, lots of vegetables I've planted. I'm sure you all have the same issue. These little tags, they uh, wash off very easily so you don't realize what you have growing. But I have some vegetables. I got my tomatoes. Everyone knows what they look like. I have some carrots. Um, this white sprinkle you see is DE. I'll explain later. Helps with aphids and bugs. It's amazing. I got some basil here, spinach. I got my lettuce. I grow this for my tortoise. Looking beautiful. No aphids, no bugs. She's gorgy. Got some broccoli. Probably won't do anything. And I got some potatoes in here. This is like a sixth generation green onion. I've cut it six times. It's starting to flower now, which is cute. And I'm flowering my cilantro so I can get some seeds for next season. A couple of herbs here. Now here's my shelf. Let me show you what I did with my shelf this year. I made it a little bit bigger. Last year it was half the size. And this time I prepared before planting seeds. I did a bug preventative because last year around this time is when I started my garden and a week or two later when the sprouts came up I had so many bugs, leaf miners, aphids, caterpillars, it was terrible. I hated it. So I wanted to be preventative this year so this is what I did. We, we tossed all the soil and then I added my, my favorite mulch, grow mulch. And I filled the shelf all the way up. Kellogg's, it's organic, my favorite. I like to add my own fertilizers. And I always go organic. I swear by Dr. Earth's, it's my favorite. I use this, this one, and the Pink Lady for my flowers. I'm out of Pink Lady. We're ordering some now. So yeah, this is what I put in there. And then I sprinkled a little of this. Now, some people call this DE. It's all organic. It's safe for your garden, safe for your pets and your children. It's just not safe to inhale. So you'll need to use a mask when you use this. And I use a sifter, uh, a flower sifter to apply it to my garden. Um, and yeah, so what it does is it's a bunch of shells and bones and, and rocks. And so when you sprinkle it on the garden, anything that has an exoskeleton or larvae or anything like that that crawls across it, it's going to grind them. It's going to grind against their, sh their uh, skeleton and it's going to hurt them really bad. It's going to dry them out. It dehydrates the larvae. So it either hurts them, kills them, or sends them packing, which I'm okay with. The only thing is, is it can hurt um, the good bugs too, which is, you know, you're sitting here trying to decide, you know, if you want to hurt the good bugs, you need the pollinators. It's just really, really hard situation. <laughs> Um, because aphids really, really kill everything. So I found that putting this in my soil two weeks ago before I planted controlled the bugs because once you put new soil in, in the fertilizer and then you water a few times, it starts to stink and attracts flies and bugs and all that good stuff. It didn't happen this time. Also, another fun fact, when you wet the, D the DE, once it dries, it continues working again. So it's great. It doesn't wash away. It just dries up and continues to work. So I love that. And I just put some on last night as well after I watered uh, because I saw that there were some flies on my, on my seedlings. So I'm um, just going to show you what I've got going on. 
Also, companion gardening this year. Last year I built all these trellises for my tomatoes and I put all this burlap to cover them and I learned so much this past year. You do not need a cover. These plants need the light or else they're not going to grow. So covering them with burlap definitely slows down the growth and stunts the growth and brings bugs and diseases. That's what I found in my experience. I learned that plants, they, if they have a good root system before it gets really, really hot, sorry, before it gets really, really hot, if it has a good root system, then you can keep them alive without cover. As long as those roots don't dry out, then the tips of the leaves won't dry out. So when you have dry roots, you have dry tips. Just remember that, guys. So you have to extra water in the hot, hot summer. Now, I'll show you what I did for my companion gardening this year. I decided I wanted to put sunflowers along the whole back wall. My sunflowers love this wall, so I figured if I went ahead and just put them along the whole entire wall, they'll grow nice and big, and they'll protect, protect my plants from the heat on the wall, right? Also, we've added stucco to my wall, so the stucco has insulated it, and it really doesn't get as hot as it used to. So that's something that if you guys want to look into, if you have a shelf that you enjoy gardening on. And so yeah, I got all my sunflowers growing first. Oh look, I got a pumpkin, yay. So things are starting to sprout now that it's warmed up. I'm pretty excited. And this shelf this time, no tomatoes. This whole shelf is like melon, cantaloupe, pumpkins, squash, all that good stuff. That's what I have. And then I have some marigolds planted right here that are popping up everywhere. This is a grape that I grew myself from the root. Very proud of myself. I put the grape here. I'm gonna let it crawl up here, down here, up here. There you go. And I got a few rogue radishes I threw here. And so this is my this is my pride and joy right here. So last year I did my corn down there and I only did one row. I made a giant mistake planting one row. You need like a block of corn, a couple rows, so that you have, you know, pollination, correct po pollination happening. So I went ahead and I have a row of sunflowers and then I have two rows of corn. And so what happens for me and my shelf is the sun comes up over here and then it comes up and it goes we get a little break when it goes behind the house and then it comes out here and then it comes down like this in my backyard and it gives this shelf a beat down in the evening time and that evening beat down is what destroyed my plants the most um, they couldn't handle it so I figure corn can handle the sun and it grows really really tall my mammoth sunflowers they're gonna go really really tall and so when they're all the way up here I feel like they're gonna protect the rest of my plants from the sun beat down because they're so tall and they enjoy the sun they can handle it so the rest of my garden will be protected so this is my plans this year guys we'll see what happens I'll update you Here's my little propagation corner because I cut my fig and I have some aloes and cactus that I'm propagating and I have some green aloes, some yellow, some cactuses. So um, I'll have a, a nice little collection by the time fall is here and hopefully I can start selling a few things. Let me show you the front yard.